Hello, everyone. Since this is either a highlight, a standalone book, or the first episode in a series, I'm jumping in to remind you what the rules are for this podcast. First rule is no real people stories. That means that any details from our own lives are merely anecdotal. We do not read books about real people, and we are not reading historical fiction. The second rule is that we are basing our analyses off of how the author treats characters and what they put them through. We are not judging the accuracy of the trauma, the accuracy of any actual conditions that may be portrayed, nor the authenticity of a character's reaction to that trauma or that particular condition. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. The hosts are not trained professionals, and their opinions come solely from personal experience. In this episode, we discuss fictional depictions of trauma and violence that may not be suitable for all audiences. Please take care of yourselves. Specific content warnings for each episode can be found in the show notes. Events in the media are discussed in approximate order of escalation. This episode contains spoilers. In this episode, we are discussing The Mermaid, the Witch, and the Sea, a story about a girl who is sold off by her parents and ends up finding her real love on the sea. Hi, I'm Nicole. And I'm Robin. And today on Books That Burn, we're discussing The Mermaid, the Witch, and the Sea by Maggie Takuda Hall. And let's get into our factions. First, we have Flora slash Florian. Uh, They use both names. Then we have Evelyn, Rake, Alfie, the Witch, the Nameless Captain, the Pirate Supreme, the Lady Ire, or Air, and Genevieve. For our first topic, with Rake and colonialism. So he was a child when his people, um, Quark, were initially conquered and colonized by the Imperials. And because of this, he has kind of a complicated... I feel like relationship is the wrong word to describe what he has with Genevieve because they do not have a relationship. They have a complicated antipathy and have to exist in space around each other, but they... No, it's more complicated than that because she is at the moment the aggressor in his space. Mm Mm-hmm. And that is, and she is the aggressor supporting the colonial aggressors and working for and with and literally the second in command and apprentice to the specific person who is part of that colonial force. And she is from his area that was attacked and conquered. So it's not just that they're forced to exist. It's that she is the problem. Right. All of that is what I was reaching for instead of their relationship is complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just <laughs> all all that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Genevieve is an apprentice to Lady Iyer, and Iyer is an imperial. She is one of the colonizers. And, like, minor spoiler, she's, like, working for, like, the emperor? So she's not, like, a random... My point is she's not just some random noble person right? who has a servant. By working for her, Genevieve is actively enforcing, or actively working towards what the emperor in charge of all the colonization wants, not just being a maid for a random imperial woman, which is how it looks at first. And I mean, how all this relates to Rake is he sees someone with a face like his who is working for the people who killed his family. Yeah, and there there's a lot of like um very much of like a a we're 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 given some context in these scenes where it feels like to him she is the betrayer to mm-hmm. her culture, to their area, to their people and it's just another <laughs> another metaphorical knife in the back to everything else happening in that scene and in that situation. Yeah. And kind of like Genevieve's take is, hey, I'm rolling with it and surviving. And Rake is like, 
And Rake is like, no, actually, you have become the problem. Right, right. Rake is like, we are from Quark, and you are doing things that hurt that. And by extension, emotionally, it's and uh, more than emotionally, also literally hurt him. But like the, sorry, I'm having a little trouble distinguishing between between the parts of the book where he just doesn't like her, but to him, she technically hasn't done anything yet, which is most of the book. Uh, yeah, I mean, but he, but the fact that she's already in the potential employ that she is in the potential employ of in the earlier parts of the book. And Mm -hmm. there are some other things where he suspects her employer of being this thing, maybe. And like, he's already, he's just not a fan. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. to, to, To put it extremely loosely, she gives him bad vibes. And then he feels justified when he finds out who she is and what she is doing. Right, right. I just like, it's all, it's all an, an instinctual, like, ugh, gross. And then it's, oh, no, this is correct. Actually, you're terrible. Mm hmm. Yeah. But Rake has, um, he's hurt, hurt by, you know, more than just Genevieve. He's in basically like a bunch of bad stuff happens to him in the book. And at the, Kind of. I was gonna say at the heart of it is, I don't know. It, it it feels like he's he has spent the rest of his life after his people were killed, after his mother was killed by the Imperials, kind of like having to make do and survive however he can. And the presence of Genevieve kind of forces some clarity about which lines he has made for himself that he won't cross. Yeah, there's def- there's yeah, that makes sense. There's there's definitely some of like it doesn't matter what I do as long as I don't do this thing and then Genevieve shows up and has in in his opinion just completely sold out to the oppressor and supports them and he's like, "Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I know where my line is. It's you." Right, right. My line is not being you. <laughs> On to Evelyn. Do you want to take this one? Uh, yeah. So Evelyn has a very complicated set of things going on here. Um, mm-hmm. I think the the biggest thing there's there's so many layers. So the first thing that's really kind of this it's almost a weird bait and switch of problems and terrible things being done to her. So you start with being sold, literally sold to a a future husband that she does not want. It's not a tradition she's consenting to participate in. I'm not I'm not knocking traditions of um, arranged marriages, arranged marriages. But like you have to like if you don't consent, that's still a problem. And she does not want to and is very vocal with her parents about not wanting to. And like she's clearly saying, please, no. <laughs> Uh, and we have a, we actually get our reason for that later, but mm-hmm. uh, we have this like you're being sold off to a husband. Oh, just kidding! No, you're being sold off to be the target for this other thing where you will die intentionally. And she, it just there's just this nested layer of oh my parents are trying to marry me off because I'm a disappointment and a failure and they don't like me and they don't want anything to do with me and they're just getting me out of the house to oh my parents are trying to kill me because they just hate me that much small point of clarification not that you were obscuring this but the but the disappointment you allude to is wanting to kiss girls I had the imp- I had the impression that it was far more than that. There's a lot of things where she just there's lines about like a shame that you're crooked. Like it's there's that, but there's also just her unwillingness and un- and it's hinted at being an inability to be a good noble example of certain traditions and to behave properly in general and to care about mm-hmm. thing. Like there, there. I mean, yes, that is part of it. But, like, e- even from the beginning of the book where she doesn't think they actually know, she already talks about how they're so disappointed in her for not being the example they want her to be and not being interested in the things they want her to be interested in. Like, there's so many this layers is true, to that. 
but just like her being her being queer is kind of like it, it, it turns into kind of like the emblematic thing it it does like, for her and it does in in like the plot yes um but it it's i just it's definitely not like the key <laughs> stone oh don't worry yeah anything. her parents found lots of things and yeah. lots of ways that they were disappointed yeah but like <laughs> the disappointment a big part of that is that she is uninterested in a man and i don't know it feels like when we're talking about her being sent to marry a man she hasn't met met oh wait actually she's being sent to die i do feel like her queerness is pretty relevant to this part of the discussion. That's all I mean. Uh, it is. I was trying not to spoil that if we weren't going to talk about it. Oh, <laughs> I was assuming I, that we were going to talk about this in broad strokes and not spoil the plot twist at the end at like halfway through the book. Um, oh, I guess that doesn't technically no, spoil it, the twist. N- no, she's she likes. Okay, forget I said anything. Forget I said anything. There's a plot twist related to that. <laughs> That I she thought likes we were a girl at the very start of the book. So. That's not what I thought you were referring to. Nope, so, that's what I meant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, actually, there's that so, has some weird. This is kind of a sidebar to our actual topic. That oh, we're that's discussing. got some problems. Yeah, that has some like major power imbalance, inability to mm-hmm. consent problems. Yep. Colonizer colonized. It's her literal going lady's on. maid who it works with her and functions with her all day long and cannot tell her no and Mm -hmm. also if you know if she if this maid is now she doesn't think her parents know but in theory if her and her maid doing anything were to become public knowledge i mean if this this couple is willing to send their child to her death they will not leave her maid a lot. We don't actually know that her maid lives. Let's be real. We have, we have no idea what we happens no to clue. the maid. And the book does bring up that we have no idea what yeah. happens to the maid, that she has no idea. Um, it doesn't like, explicitly say, like, oh, my parents might have killed her to cover up what I did. But, like, that's not out of the... They're sending their daughter to be murdered. Like, my my assumption reading the book was that that maid does not make it to wherever she thinks she's going. Just from the jump. Yeah. I didn't assume something that dark. I just assumed that she I, was... I did, even without knowing Evelyn was going to die, was supposed to die. Yeah. <laughs> like, that was my immediate, like, oh, that made it... The, her dad knows that maid is gone <laughs> forever. I assumed she was left adrift without references, which would be socially, potentially could lead to her like not but being if, able to afford anything but yeah but, but and, even if she can even if she can't afford anything if she can talk right if she can say yeah, yeah. that this this noble noble child was like kissing her and making out with her and whatever else that they did off screen like even with that person gone and married that's still incredibly damaging yeah we don't know this is extrapolation we have no idea yeah we we don't know this is some position but like it's all of the pieces are are there for my assumption, I think. But yeah, there there's just there's a lot of stuff there with and like part of um, Evelyn's growth as a person is like thinking about that and kind of realizing that yeah yeah <laughs> actually thinking about the effect on other people instead of just her own desires yeah absolutely. Yeah, that's definitely part of her character growth. But I do want to know what happened to the maid. Um, <laughs> but with what happened with Evelyn, yeah, the, the her her intended death was meant to be the excuse for a war. So not only would it be her death, it would be an excuse for even more people to die and you know tying back to the ongoing colonialism which is a huge theme in the book um they they wanted an excuse to get to take more land and conquer more of a place by pretending that these other people are the ones that killed her and so yeah the the ship that she's on that's actually piratey um uh, yeah smugglery. is hired to smugglery at, le- at least right yeah but it, they're they're 
there's some there's some very interesting layering in this book of Mm -hmm. different factions so there's the colonial forces who have an intentional plan to essentially reduce uh almost a a, i'm gonna use this is not the term the books the book uses but i'm for a reference point they're essentially trying to reduce the power of i was gonna say the god of the sea essentially they're trying well, to the stop sea. the sea. The sea, yeah. But they're trying to take away the power that this entity has. I'd say entity is the yeah. right term. Yeah. There we go. Um, that this this entity has over its own waters. Yeah, that that the sea as some kind of self aware spiritual ish force or flat out spiritual force, but also physical force is able to exert, and so. Mm-hmm. We have we have that happening. We have this like not working for the government and like technically smuggling and selling things and like we have this almost us like smuggler underground going. They're not against the colonial the colonialism or colonials, but they are definitely not like they're selling the black market goods and the unsanctioned goods and the illegal goods. Mm-hmm. But they are still uh, me- theologically almost me- like this. Th- I don't have a good term for this. They're still on kind of the side of the powers that be. They just exist under their structure. Then we have the actual people who are fighting on behalf of this entity in the sea that is the sea. We are, f- mm-hmm. and so you have like this. The smugglers are are trying to circumnavigate the official forces and then the minions and underlings were uh, working for and working with the, the literal sea is trying to circumnavigate and work under and infiltrate both of those other groups. <laughs> Do you mean circumvent? Yes. Okay. What? Why? You said circumnavigate, which would be both. going around the entire globe. Uh, no. Well, you can circumnavigate the globe. You can also circumnavigate other things. They're trying to avoid. Like, interesting is, hmm, hadn't really thought about that. <laughs> um, yeah, but, the, yeah, circumnavigating yeah. the globe is a thing, but mm-hmm. that's not the only use of that term. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, but yeah, so you have like, for the sea, neutral don't care about the sea and trying to be on behalf of the sea. Yeah, and and there's this really like th- it. It's very good writing. It feels like there's just more happening that we just that just aren't relevant to this particular storyline. Like there's this like we we kind of get bits and pieces, but like you have to imagine that this is not the only ship, and you have to imagine that these are not the only people, and that this is not the only situation. We just happen to get the storyline of the person they were going to kill as a scapegoat. Right. Yeah. Like, if they're ra- if the Imperials are raising an entire army that is ready to go as soon as they get word that Evelyn is dead, this isn't going to be their only plan. And, like, I don't know where you were going with that summary. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So a huge theme in how Florian is characterized is mutilation, both to Florian and what she's like ordered to do. Oh, um, Flora uses Flora and Florian and he and she kind of going with each name. So we're going to kind of use those interchangeably depending on which bit of the book we're talking about. But the, the this theme of of mutilation starts like pretty early in her characterization, mm-hmm. kind of like beginning with being told to mutilate someone else, and then part um, part way th- well, sp- it's she's ordered to kill and mutilate someone else instead. She just um, mutilates someone who is already dead <laughs> um, uh, because yeah yeah th- there's. There, there's there's complicated things where she feels responsible for that person having died, but she didn't technically kill them. Um, 
Yeah. And then later on, she is mutil or Flo- he is mutilated for not doing something he was ordered to do from kind of like an like disability standpoint. I appreciate that there isn't like a from from what I recall, I don't think there's like a magic fix for getting his finger back. It doesn't um, have it. He spends a lot of the book without it. He does. I, I thought don't he, remember. I thought he had his finger at the end. I thought that I was a big thing. Was that part of, like, literally transforming into not a human uh, I think at the end? So, uh, eh, it's probably. I don't know if it's worth looking up for our discussion. I th- I think I don't remember. <laughs> at least what I would say is. The, no, there's no quest aspect to getting the finger back. If it does, oh it's- yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's not like a a goal or anything. It's just might have happened, right? We, and we're not totally sure. Like it, yeah. Whether or not the figure is restored, like, is not a big deal in the text. It's not treated that way. Right. It's much more like, well, did something that he was. He didn't do a thing he was ordered to do. And then there was a consequence in like the way he kind of uh, deals with that uh, opens Evelyn's eyes about some stuff that's going on. Yeah, this what is were, an, kinda, uh, her thoughts on this theme. So I think there there's definitely so that first off, this is a, a thing. Mutilation of, of people in general is kind of a a uh, a, a normal quote unquote expected maybe not normal expected part of this like underground smuggling lifestyle piracy is it piracy officially piracy it's 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 piracy it's it's piracy i mean it's piracy and also like being a slaver ship but like oh yeah it's it's piracy yeah i i i struggle with calling it piracy because my brain wants to call both this group and the worshiping the sea group pirates but i don't want to conflate the two and so i don't my brain wants to not call either of them pirates and just find other words um yeah no they're they're on ships and taking stuff yeah it's it's tricky when you have two ocean going (laughs) quote-unquote rebel forces that are not aligned and want nothing to do with each other well kind of um yeah so we have like the nameless captain and it's easy to remember that the nameless captain is like the bad one because he's nameless because he can't remember his is he, name. Yeah, because he keeps uh, he keeps killing mermaids and drinking blood, and like, yeah. that makes him lose memories. Yeah, uh, um, this is part of why the ocean is mad at him. I promise this book makes sense. Uh, <laughs> this book is great. This book makes total sense, and it actually like it gives you a very good walkthrough. But uh, speaking of of the cut of the author's intent the author has set up like this whole world of people this whole culture of people to be incredibly both dealing out death and mutilation and slavery and also at potentially receiving it at any moment like this is an expected part of this lifestyle is that you will just be physically punished in a very permanent way if your commanding officer isn't happy with you. And even, like, um, Alfie, uh, Flora's brother, um, I mean, he doesn't, like, have a limb or a digit removed, but but he is whipped um, to, I believe, the point that bone is visible. Yeah. Like, it, it's... Yeah. The, the description doesn't... Yeah, the description doesn't linger on that, so it's kind of like literally here's what's going on and then it you know it doesn't linger but i i do think it is kind of graphic i i think it is more i think it's one of those scenes that is brief but graphic i i think it's literally the minimum needed to convey the thing I, but the thing is yeah we'll get into that in the wrap up obviously uh, yeah. i'm just thinking through yeah i think the only thing i'll say on that and i think i'll say this again in the wrap up is I think this is one of those scenes where if you don't have a good visual picture of what that kind of wound is, it's not as graphic, but the more knowledge you have about 
what that kind of of trauma looks like the more graphic this scene is yeah because it's it's a brief flash with just enough words that if you know what it's talking about you have a good picture but it's not filling in knowledge gaps for you for sure okay so this is technically ya and i do want to briefly <laughs> talk about that YA. this okay. technically is ya this is one of those yeah it's ya but to me it's like oh this is 16 plus ya like <laughs> ya is a genre can go down to like 12 but it's like please <laughs> please don't read this before middle school if you're or, a person you can I read mean, you know I, you can read whatever you want yeah. don't hand it unawares to someone I, under than 16 I, that's kind of my i will say this. this i will say this if this book had been in the library at having with me with easy access to it and i had a reason to pick it up this would have been prime content when I was like nine, which is why you should not hand it to somebody <laughs> under 16 <laughs> or recommend it to them under 16. Um, yeah. <laughs> if it, if it Sorry, was I Nicole's just... favorite thi- type of thing to read at like eight, nine, ten, it needs some boundaries <laughs> for recommendations. A little bit. Um, but yeah, so the 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 theme of mutilation and then i think also the i think it it's used really well to convey kind of the precariousness of everyone's situations because i don't think anyone ends the book in the same circumstances of luck and or affluence in which they began <laughs> it well well, some people it gets better. I some people like, it gets worse. Does Florian, I feel like I feel like Florian just moves sideways. Ah, uh, no, because Florian starts out like on a ship with basically no status and ends up quite happy. Ends up ends uh, up happy, still with no status, still in the middle of the ocean, right? Oh, I didn't. I didn't mean class. Well, you know, you just, did say you specifically said, said and happiness. I do count like you count happiness as a a it, move it was, in their functionality, in their status. You count like, happiness if someone, as okay. You're, I was thinking status, status was like change. structural and not like emotional. No, I count. I was thinking structural and emotional. Like okay. I mean. Because your structural one changes, you're probably either very happy or very unhappy about it. It but, was all tangled up in my thoughts. But if you're starving in poverty and something makes you happy, that doesn't mean you're going to live. I don't know. I feel like I don't. I, <laughs> I would Florian's argue. happy because some good things. Some happen. good things have happened to Florian, but Florian doesn't exactly have more resources than they had at the beginning. <laughs> Actually, I would argue at the beginning of our book, they have fewer resources thanks to their brother. Okay, I feel like we're dodging some interesting spoilers here. Yeah, I would argue not fewer, few, fewer resources, but way fewer obligations. This seems great, but that's okay. Well, that mm. I mean, agree you, to disagree. If, I don't if think you that's don't a need, sum. if you don't need to pay rent, it doesn't matter that you don't have rent money. Does that make sense? That's what I'm. That's the kind of paradigm I'm thinking of. I mean, they do still need things like food and clothing, so I would still say it's a net loss. I feel like you've forgotten how the book ends. Flor- okay. All right. I'm going to put a timestamp. Don't. 11, don't tell me. Okay. All right. Well, I will talk to you before we do the wrap up. We are, we are way I, done uh, with this conversation. And I'll probably okay. cut most of 90% of this. This month, we'd like to welcome our new supporter on Patreon, Danny, my co-worker with that big D energy. Thank you so much for supporting the podcast. And if you would like to join Danny in keeping the show going, you can check us out on patreon.com slash books that burn. Thank you. This month, we'd like to welcome our new supporter on Patreon, Danny, my co-worker with that big D energy. Thank you so much for supporting the podcast. And if you would like to join Danny in keeping the show going, you can check us out on patreon.com slash books that burn. Thank you. 
This month, we'd like to welcome our new supporter on Patreon, Danny, my co-worker with that big D energy. Thank you so much for supporting the podcast. And if you would like to join Danny in keeping the show going, you can check us out on patreon.com slash books that burn. Thank you. Hey. Oh, hey, Jeff. What's going on, guys? Oh, you know, talking about Superman. Oh, cool. I could talk about Superman. I could talk some more about Superman. We know. I'll bet a few people would want to get in on this. I'm down. You know it. That sounds like fun. I'll do it. Cool. Let's do it. We can call the show Men of Steel. And you can find it at certainpov.com. Or wherever you get your podcasts. Yay. On to the wrap-up and ratings for the gratuity rating for colonialism. I think so technically the exact thing with the exact character we were talking about, I think it's moderate. But I I don't even uh, I guess it, it is because of some conversations that happened, but we don't actually see on screen. Okay, I'm, I'm okay, gonna go with, I'm okay with moderate. Yeah. Colonialism and I would argue colonialism being like a bad thing, uh, is like a huge theme in the book. It it is um, and so, but I no not not at the level I'd call severe, but just enough to contextualize the specific instance yeah. we're talking yeah, about and I, make it be moderate. I think I think we have implica we had definitely oh, not even I think we definitely have implications of severe things. Um, we like vaguely, severe backstory things. Yeah, like we know that severe things have happened, but they are not part of this story. Yeah. Um, and I think there's for, one scene in particular that this is why I was trying to decide if that one scene was severe or if it leaves mm. it moderate, but I'm okay with moderate. Okay. Um, for being sold by parents. Okay. So mm. there's what <laughs> we thought was going to maybe happen. And then there's like what actually does happen. So uh, I think, mm. I think certain characters were trying to precipitate a severe event, but what actually is in the book, I think is moderate. Yes. Yep. Uh, yeah. Mutilation is severe. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And then we'll get into care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll end up with ca- okay. talking about care later. But yeah. the actual descriptions are severe. Yeah. Well, the um, the thing that is happening is severe, and then the yeah. way. Yeah. Okay. Yes. The way the thing is described. Yeah. It's severe. <laughs> we'll get into it. This book is Inter- is hard because this is an example of a book where there are a lot of things that in another book, in another context, in a longer story, everything would be severe and traumatic. Everything. Like, not just the things that we are talking about, but everything. There is no, there are very few tiny little things that would be not that way, but this is a YA book and it's very toned down and it's it's hard to pinpoint sometimes exactly where we want this rating to fall without minimizing what is happening (laughs) but this is a tricky one uh okay it is just for my own peace of mind i went and double checked that i didn't have it miscategorized and it really is ya and according (laughs) to this according to the story graph it really is ya so okay i mean it, it is ya like it is. I, I was checking because yeah. there's a thing that that happens, um, especially with definitely with fantasy authors, and especially with fantasy authors who are not cis men, is that they'll write a thing and it's adult, and it just gets labeled as YA literally because of the author and the fact that it's fantasy. Oh yeah, that makes sense. I from my own reading of it, it it, it reads as YA. It doesn't read as adult. Oh, it's totally why I, I I was just thinking in my head, oh, no, did I accidentally make that <laughs> assumption when I categorized this? And it's like, okay, no, I didn't. This, this doesn't, that's not what's going on. But it, it's a thing that I check because someone casually will have something in like a list of YA stuff. And then I look and I'm like, this isn't YA. Oh, it's just that it's fantasy. Great. Right, 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 right. That, that thing again. Okay. So... Integral, interchangeable, or irrelevant. The colonialism, uh, I think it, th- the particular events we're discussing with this particular character, I think they're interchangeable. Colonialism as a theme writ large, like, I, is kind of one of the points of the book. 
what's your pushback and in which direction? My thought is, so here's the thing I'm struggling with. We have three point of view characters. Mm -hmm. One of them is framed as, two of them are framed as the main character. One mm -hmm. of them is framed as the auxiliary character, which is why that character's trauma is in our minor character slot, even though they are a point of view character. Mm -hmm. I, I think that this character, quite frankly, is interchangeable as a concept and didn't need to be a point of view character. I know why structurally they were. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it, it has, works. It has to do with main characters not actually witnessing events all the time and the author just like not changing up how they're writing to accommodate that they just made another point of view character mm -hmm. but I, I i think that the whole character traumas included is, is interchangeable interchangeable yeah like the colonialism is a theme yes but the actual everything about this character didn't we didn't have to witness any of it for it to still mm -hmm. like be there and we did which is fine, which is great. They're a great character. They're actually my favorite character. But, yeah, I think the whole everything, trauma yeah. included, is interchangeable. Yeah. Then for... Which is not a knock on the character. This is my favorite character in the entire book. <laughs> They're the only... <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, he, he's, he's great, yeah. For sold by parents. Integral. It's the plot. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Yeah. I love when we get easy ones that just are the plot. It's nice. <laughs> Yes, uh, definitely integral. Uh, mutilation, also, I think that given that we're talking about pirates, it would have been very odd to pick anything else. And uh, to me, well, I think that... That doesn't make it more relevant. No, I'm thinking about like integral versus interchangeable. I, I know. I'm saying that doesn't have anything to do with this rating. Just because it it is something that you think makes sense in a setting has nothing to do with this rating. Okay, then I don't know how to approach the rating for this one. I think it's irrelevant. I think it's just a thing that happens for world building and actually doesn't really bear any relevance. Interesting, because it is... At, at best, at most, I would give it interchangeable because... But no, because we could have started the story without knowing how this character joined the ship. We didn't actually need that background. I think we did need um, the incident on the ship in order to push the character. But it, it didn't have to be. We didn't. Oh, no, no, it didn't have to be that. No, because there was another thing that is a very, very big deal that would push them to leave. Yeah, there were so many things. They were already headed that direction. Like, OK, there's this. It's oh, just that there. It's me. just flavor text. Is that a joke? <laughs> Does does our does our topic of mutilation wound you, Robin? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. Okay, that isn't quite how I meant that. I, I just know. meant that, like emotionally, it's like I I hate the idea of this topic being irrelevant. Yeah, it just is. It's flavor text. It has nothing to do with our stuff. Ah, <laughs> oh, I don't know. Something about that sits weirdly. Like I. I hate I'm that you're right. I don't <laughs> think you're wrong. You just don't necessarily, like it. <laughs> but I, I don't like that. Well, okay. I will say this before I pointed that out. You said that it was the thing that you expected in this story because of the context and because of the parties involved. So I think it makes sense. I right. Think it, I think it meets audience expectations. Right. But I think plot wise, it's irrelevant. It's just a thing. It's just in there. Uh, <laughs> you sound okay. so uncomfortable. <laughs> no, I hate that. I don't think you're necessarily wrong, but I don't like it. Because see, I was debating between integral and interchangeable. And then you come along with your very good argument for irrelevant. And now I'm salty. Uh, salty like the sea. Like the sea. And that was on purpose. I don't disagree, but I'm slightly unhappy. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Was the trauma treated with care for colonialism? Um. <laughs> yeah. <yes>. So <laughs> yes. Enough. Maybe. Let's go with it. Let's go with enough because I'm. 
I'm in the middle of reading two different books with heavy colonialism themes, and before that, I've read, like, a bunch of others. Like, so I have read uh, a lot of um, <laughs> not care versions <laughs> of this so I, I have. I think this also might be a tiny. Your mileage may vary depending on how much of a a generational trauma colonialism is to you oh, personally. Oh, true. Absolutely. Um. So I I don't want to say it's no care because a lot of care was taken with this. There is very very hand. It's very hands off. It's very velvet gloves. It's very. No ambiguity, but no, nothing visceral, nothing, nothing like that. It, it is, it um, is the, it is, I think, the bare minimum needed to convey and why more, this yeah. thing is a bad thing, why this thing hurts these characters. And, and it's I will like say literally this. the minimum you could possibly use to effectively convey this concept and to me that is like enough care well and i and i will say this too the and this this might factor into this rating <laughs> or it does for me the focus is always on the party who has been wronged and not on the perpetrator the centering in this trauma is the character whose family and lives life has been directly impacted and directly uh mm -hmm. damaged by colonialism so that they are the character who is being centered but they are also they also get a uh, this is hopefully not a spoiler they get a tiny bit of little itty bitty bit of like not retribution but like stand they get to stand up for themselves and they get to kind of tell off some of the yeah. people and they they kind of get a little bit of of um it's uh, a, it's a very good story <laughs> moment, but it doesn't yeah. fix everything because no, it can't. Um, no, but but yeah, I yeah. would say, but but the oppressor is not the one telling the story. The oppressor is not the one being centered. Their pain mm -hmm. is also not the focus. It is their anger and their hurt and their goals and their reasoning. It's it's the things that yeah are are validating without being traumatic. If and as a, a, a slight uh, caveat in case anyone is, you know, going straight to the wrap up without having listened to the sections, which is fine. We actually encourage that if that's yeah. what we need to do. Um, <laughs> we want you to do that if you want to do that. When we say it doesn't have the perspective of the oppressor, we mean for like the particular character we were talking about and how colonialism rates to them. Yeah, there is the a character talking. in, right, there is a character who is part of the like colonialism faction and so we we do from you could say we do have the perspective of one of the oppressors but uh but it's the it's narrative not, i think handles that yeah. very well and she is not she is not structurally she's, uh, powerful she's not, in she's the way not, that that description could imply she is not there there are a when col when used. colonialism <sighs> is being discussed, mm -hmm. she is not our point of view character. Is the yeah. point there? Yeah. Pre well, yeah, pretty much all the time. Yeah, yeah. There could be some very tiny scenes occasionally, but it's usually when she's like realizing it's her witnessing things. Yes, yeah, it's her witnessing things and realizing that it's a problem. <laughs> is uh -huh. when it's it's not like the the emotional discussion of this thing. Yes. Yeah, which is important. Like you're mm -hmm. you're centering the voice of the party who is was is wronged. is has been wronged, and yeah, I think it I think it works really well. I I I still lean on enough. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'm solidly with you there. Okay, um, but yeah, it 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 it's in in our in our opinions, it was handled incredibly well, um, with enough there that you know even like a. A younger kid reading this is not going to, I think, miss the message. Um, it's mm -hmm. not something you can ignore for sure, uh, which is why it made our our list <laughs> instead of other things. Mm -hmm. But it it is a book with that as the setting. So yep. Then we get to sold by parents. Yay! <laughs> uh, I think I, this is either. Oh uh, man, I'm gonna go with enough. I I concur. Yeah. Um, Without any more details, because this one is so 
there's some stuff in the plot that we don't want to give away. This, this author, um, uh, you know, I would say the feeling I'm getting is this author is, is very good at the minimum needed to convey the awfulness but it does have some like fridge horror vibes <laughs> where yeah. how how awful this feels will depend on how much you understand about what could have happened. Yeah. Technically didn't. Yeah. Um and actually moving on to mutilation, that that mm-hmm. was something that I stated in our our topic as well. I fully think that mutilation is the same way. I think yeah. I think it was enough but also incredibly like fridge horror where the more you know about the injuries that were caused in the book and how they work and how they would look, mm-hmm. uh, the worse the scene gets because yep. you can fill in the blanks. But the book does not, does not uh, fill in knowledge gaps for you. So if you don't already have that prior knowledge, this book is not going to like add to your knowledge. Yeah. Which is a really hard line to walk with physical injuries. Can I just say, I don't know yeah, if we, yeah. I don't know if we've discussed that in our episodes before or not, but it is something that I think about every single time we read a book where one of our traumas is physical injuries and we have to decide how it was handled because it's so hard to convey the feel of a physical injury and have it seem, have it be visual for the people who can visualize it without teaching somebody what it looks like that's so difficult yeah and like there's a time and a place for like wanting to be taught what it looks like but oh yeah you know there's absolutely books that that just say you know what nope we're gonna do this but like yeah when you have books that try to treat it with care it's so hard it's a difficult Mm -hmm. line to walk and yeah it's something i it's something i i think about every time we we have a book like that (laughs) Because some yeah. of them, some of them try really hard and like fail, and we've had a couple of those where you can tell that they're trying and that they just give you too many things, and you're like, ugh, nope. <laughs> yeah. So I think that means all of us were all of our topics were enough. Which, like, for the topics being discussed, sure, mm-hmm. great. Nope, totally, that was, totally makes sense. That's that's really good. I'm a fan. Yep. All right point of view of the trauma and aftermath as nicole mentioned like this book is pretty good about keeping centering the centering the injured party yeah and centering the victims yeah there are there are you know because we only have three point of view characters and those aren't the only three people in the entire book to get hurt ever um right you know well but we still kind of see our point of view characters as the ones witnessing Mm mm-hmm and being affected by the scene. I, yeah. I'm thinking particularly of the way that we could have spoken about Alfie and mutilation oh, instead of Flora I, and mutilation. That's but, but prominent Flora in was, my mind, yeah. But Flora was still mostly the person witnessing that. Yeah. You know, so like, it's still kind of... It's not like we have the perspective of the person who hurt them instead. No, no. Right, it's not that. It's just um, either victim or someone who very much cares about whoever is going through the thing that's pretty consistent actually thinking about this i think we literally have point of view of the person suffering from the thing (laughs) like one to one Mm -hmm. colonialism it is rake's trauma and we get rake's point of view Mm -hmm. being sold by her parents it is evelyn's trauma and we get basically only evelyn's point of view yeah and for mutilation flora florian is the only one who really suffers from that and we pretty much only get their point of view yep um for trauma and aftermath by the way everything we only get the character who is undergoing the thing yeah for like yeah and you know we're obviously you know focusing on the the three topics that we picked i'm just thinking about how this book handle handles trauma in general and but it, it doesn't always yeah. line up that neatly in our book in the books we talk about and in this one it, it's quite literally just perfectly yep right down the line yep which is again that's hard to do that's hard to do and tell a good story with everything being conveyed very well yep i don't actually right. know if having multiple point of view characters makes that easier or more difficult i have no idea from a writing perspective that's something i need to remember to put in one of our author interviews because i just want to hear people's opinions on it yeah i don't know all right aspiring writer tip 
your aspiring writer tip is to go on Twitter and tag us and tell me if varying <laughs> points of view <laughs> makes it harder or easier to portray. But also do that if you want to. Uh, yes, please. I want opinions. Yeah. So tag us at Books That Burn. Let us know. Okay. But for the aspiring writer tip, we need a segment where what do you want to do nothing. instead for this I segment? I have literally nothing we haven't said before. Yeah, we don't. Okay, things. let's put a pin in this. Hi, everybody. No writer tip this week because we're going to revamp this later. Uh, moving on. <laughs> what was your favorite non-traumatic thing about the book? My favorite non-traumatic thing about the book. Okay. Um, Florian learning to read. You know, I, I've noticed it as a thing. One character teaching another character how to read is like a really good way to have bonding when especially traveling characters are stuck together for a very long time and one of them knows how to read and the other does not. Uh, what you do from there could vary drastically the book, but like I really, really liked... Um, I, I really liked that before it all went sideways. Mm-hmm. Um, I think for me, there's not much in this book that's not traumatic. I think... Okay, my favorite non-traumatic thing in the book is definitely still traumatic for somebody. I really like that we have vampire mermaids. Yes. Yes. That That is... I also like that thing. I am a huge fan of just the concept of a mermaid that subsists off of hemoglobin-based blood? <laughs> Question mark? Mm -hmm. <laughs> which, is, which is interesting to me because, like... I don't remember what all animals have that same blood that people do. And I know there are insects that have different types of blood. But, like, do the mermaids hunt on the shore? <laughs> do they, are there, are, do ocean creatures in general have red, oxygen rich, oxygen based blood? Like, how does this work? Um, but I, I just, I, I think it is a very, it was not what I thought the answer was going to be. And I was like, oh, good. <laughs> when I read it, it was very good. Generally speaking, according to Google, fish have hemoglobin. Uh, okay. I'm also finding a bunch of stuff about this one fish where it's all like, this one fish doesn't have hemoglobin. And so Ooh. I think generally <laughs> speaking, they have, looks like they have several different hemoglobins. So that's fun. Okay. All right. So so now we just have the visual of a mermaid snagging a fish in the water and just like draining it. Yeah. <laughs> it's very, it's just, I. it's so entertaining to me. That's also probably like somebody's, somebody's dream to have in a concept in a book. The mermaid is not on screen a lot, but like, if that's your thing, it's in here. <laughs> If you've Get ever wanted a crossover, if you've ever wanted a crossover vampire mermaid, vam like mermaids drink blood canonically, uh, you don't see the mermaid hunting anything, to be clear. The mermaid is not going out for food in our scenes, but concept is in this book, so. Yeah. All right. So, uh, sorry there is no writer tip this week. We are going to retire that segment and play replace it with something new because uh after you know almost two years of episodes we're out we're of out things. of <laughs> yeah we need a new we're one. out of this and because we're also not writers <laughs> and off <laughs> and off air we have been talking about retiring the segment for a while i think we just ran out today so we'll come back next time with a better idea <laughs> or a new idea yep but uh, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll catch you in a fortnight.
All music used in this podcast was created by Nicole as Heartbeat Art Co. and is used with permission. Our transcriptionist is Heather. Follow her on Twitter at MamaDragon20. We're proud members of the Certain Point of View Network. Find all the CPOV shows at www.certainpov.com. You can contact us on Twitter at Books That Burn or by email at Books That Burn at Yahoo.com. Please consider leaving us a tip at Kofi.com slash Books That Burn or becoming a monthly supporter on Patreon.com slash books that burn all patrons get access to our upcoming book list bonus content including the second half of all interviews and will receive a one-time shout out to get updates on our written reviews recent episodes and newly completed transcripts subscribe to our fortnightly newsletter at buttondown.email slash books that burn you can find us on apple Podcasts, pandora spotify or wherever you get your podcasts please leave us a review wherever you're listening this helps people to find the show thanks for listening we'll be back in two weeks